Now, the debate on whether speaking in tongues is for today will continue probably until Jesus comes. However, in this video, did the church ever use tongues to evangelize? I mean, it was clear that tongues were used as a sign in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Even though the Apostle Paul did thank God they spoke with tongues more than the whole church in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, Notice the next verse, he would rather speak five words in church that someone could understand than 10,000 words in tongues. But before we look at the scriptures, I want you to consider the background of the early church. Quote, Greek was written and used during the early church period to communicate between people who grew up in different areas of the world and whose native tongues were quite different, end quote. When you read through the book of Acts, I challenge anywhere to find any reference when the preaching of the gospel happened that there was an interpreter. I seriously doubt anywhere in the New Testament there ever was an interpreter needed. Let's say I, I was able to go to a foreign country preaching tongues. But there's a big obstacle that I think most people haven't thought through. If they believe this is why tongues were used, here's the issue. If I'm preaching to someone in tongues and they ask me a question, I don't understand what they're saying. So unless there's an interpretation, my preaching of tongues would be useless. Because if I tell them you need Jesus because he's the only one to save your sins, and then I said, well, and they interrupt in their language, well, what, what do we do? And I couldn't convey what they needed to do. What good would that gift be? In Acts chapter 19, in verse 6, And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. He was speaking in a known tongue, not in tongues to them. And after he laid his hands on them, they began to speak in tongues. They didn't go out and preach somewhere. Acts chapter 10, the apostle Peter goes to a Gentile house. And while he was preaching in an own tongue, guess what happens? They receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with tongues in the house. So that can't be used for evangelism. And that's in Acts chapter 10, verses 23 through 46. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. We're not going to bother reading everything. In verse 1, it spoke the day of Pentecost was fully come. In verse 2, it speaks it filled all all the house where they were sitting. They were not outside preaching anywhere. They were in a house, they were praying. And in verse 4, they began to speak with tongues. Where? When they were praying and they were in the house. Verse 5, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews devout of every nation under heaven. Verse 6, and now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they heard every man speak in their own in his own language. How did they hear that? The believers were in their house, so the noise went out from the house into the streets because they were in the house praying, not evangelizing. What was the result? Verse 7, they were all amazed. And verse 7, they were like, whoa, aren't these like the locals? And they knew that these were locals, but they were speaking other languages perfectly. And they were pretty impressed. In verse 8, how they hear every man in his own tongue. Going down in verse 11, what did they hear? Did they hear the preaching of the gospel? No. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. There was no preaching going on. They had no clue while they were praying in the house what they were saying. The audience outside the house knew they were praising God and speaking of God. Verse 12, they're like, whoa, what's going on here? What does this mean? Verse 13, others began to mock and say, hey, they're full of new wine. See, the crowd had various opinions, and some even thought they were drunk. Why would they say they were drunk if they were preaching in tongues? It just was something that was pretty wild that they did not understand. But notice what the Apostle Peter did. He responds in a known tongue starting in verse 14. And then in verse 16, the apostle Peter says, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So speaking of tongues was prophesied by the prophet Joel. And he goes on to talk about it in verse 17, 18, 19, and 20. 
Yet the crowd was pricked in the heart as he gave a message. He didn't preach in tongues. Otherwise, they would have needed an interpreter. And the proof of it is this. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? If the apostle Peter was speaking in another language, they would in another language had say, hey, what do we do? He understood them. Thus, this proves that he was not evangelizing in tongues. So in conclusion, the apostle Peter gave instructions. 3,000 were saved. The speaking of tongues was the sign that drew the crowd in. But it was the preaching in the known tongue that put into action that brought salvation.